Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds, hanging out with the crew. I'm Ted. I'm Nate. Today we're going to talk about out of box scenes. We had a viewer request a while ago, um, inspired by you know one of the descriptions we had done in the video. So we're going to actually dedicate this video and possibly a new series to out of the box scenes. Today we're going to be talking about adventuring in a monster, and I've recently done this. Nice. Well, I don't know if it's recently. Whenever I ran the Spelljammer game, the past you know, year. Yeah, it's past year. You know, it, you know. Basically, you guys didn't know you were in a monster at the time. Mm -hmm. Totally did the Star Wars thing, right? You know, where you guys are, you know, looking for a place to hide, and it turns out to be a, a giant space worm. Right. Yeah, because we were spell jamming. Yes, because we were spell jamming. <laughs> we were playing our regular fifth edition game. This was, you know, out in space. D &D so, in space. So it kind of gives you like the opportunity to use un unusual terrain. And, like, there's one of two ways you can do it. One is you kind of do it Jonah and the Whale style, where, like, yeah, you got eaten by the monster. You know you're in the monster, uh, and you have to figure out how to get out. Or you, you're going to do it, like, in this, like, basically, like, Star Wars, where, like, you know, for if things go on for a while, and they don't realize they're actually inside of a monster. So, uh, you know, are you trying to, to, to tell people to, you know, always be trying to stick the ground to make sure... See if things are gonna move. Maybe, maybe. Well, you know, that ten, maybe that ten foot pole needs a point on the end. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, like that could go bad too. <laughs> you know, if you agitate it the wrong way. That's true. That's true. So, now if you know if you have uh, if you're if you're gonna design like a quest where they have to adventure in a monster and they know they do, right? You you want to make you need to uh, construct it in a way where they're not just gonna cut their way out. Right. So how do you do that? Well, one possibility is, like, the monster is so massive that whatever they're doing is just not going to be enough to, to really threaten it. Um, either it's, you know, so, some kind of, you know, astral or planar creature that the regular rules of physics don't apply. Um, or it's something, you know, that's got, like, the, you know, super wolverine healing factor that it's like, all right, you know, the wounds are closing faster than you can actually do damage. So you'll quickly realize that you don't need an investigate check. You're just not irritating it enough. I have it bleed poison. When you, <laughs> and not like, oh, it's bleeding a gooey poison. No, just be like... Oh, my God, my face is melting. <laughs> the organisms that are in its bloodstream that you get hit with, when it's uh, when you cut into it anywhere, it makes you have the poison defect and a few maybe a few other things if you keep doing it, you know, so you get sick. Well, damage and the poison effect, yeah, that yeah. would be an an incentive to not do that. Just anymore. like from biological agents, you don't have to make it like, oh, he bleeds acid or something. Well, right. but then I was thinking, what if you know, what if the situation is that you actually have to do something, like maybe you have to re retrieve an item or a person, mm -hmm. and you know it just isn't it isn't an option to leave until you've completed the completed yes. what you set out to do, or, or, or blow up the heart room or something, in the dungeon. Well, yeah, or like yeah, or maybe like you know for for like the reasons you guys have mentioned, like it's been decided like the best way to take out this threat to the kingdom or the world as it may be, mm -hmm. is to actually destroy it from the inside. Right. But like, yeah, maybe you know you, the heart organism or the brain organism or something special has to be done. Or maybe you have to set arcane charges you know, throughout the monster in specific locations in order to get the effect you need. Mm -hmm. um, so th these are all interesting ways that you can uh, keep the players engaged with, it, with this, has this natural uh, house of hazards, if you mm -hmm. will. Uh, yeah, as they try and complete the mission. I would think the the best I think would be the un basically the like non discussed mission ahead of time, like this is a giant monster and it defeats everyone by just swallowing them one at a time. And hopefully you get everybody. That's the one bad thing. Make sure so the like, archer in the back gets get you get him first. Yeah. <laughs> or, he, or he's got some kind of like tongue attack. <laughs> <laughs> he can shovel scoop everybody yeah, at one shot. Growl. Yeah, and then you and, can just start and, the adventure. You know, th there's there's times that you can launch that as as the surprise. Um, back in third edition, they they had the um, uh, I, f I, f I forget what the name of the book was, but it was Ghost something, and it was it was a guide. Oh, Ghost Walker. Ghost Walk. Yeah. Uh, and it was it was a guide to being able to play in the spirit world. And you know, I ran an adventure. I ran through the game for multiple sessions with the plan that I was going to kill you guys. So that 
I could start the Ghost Walk game. But I didn't let anybody know that that was the plan. So when it actually came time for that combat encounter to kill you, you know, I, I did. And it was, you know, some of you, you know, I didn't handle it perfectly. Some of you were like, okay, well, I guess this was supposed to happen because of the way I executed it. But if you do things properly and you get everybody within that first round or two, and they're like, holy crap, you just did a random encounter and killed us all, and then you move on to the next scene where, you, where they're inside, they're like, oh, now I get it. Yeah, you definitely want to try and figure out how do you have that impact where it feels like, holy crap, you know, I just died. Like, right. you, like you want them to think that they're char- they're, they're, it's time to hand in the character sheet. Right. Yeah. I just got eaten by a moon-sized monster. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so if, if, you, if you execute it properly, you know, so that they think, oh, my God, you know, this was a random encounter, we should have run away, and now we're all dead, um, you know, it, it can be a thrilling, you know, a thrilling victory that it changes that defeat into victory, and they're like, oh, this is cool, as opposed to the, okay, you know, what's next? Yeah. What am I going to roll up now? I think I'm going to play Warlock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I would say big deal with the monster-like creatures. Uh, th- you, they can't be, like, anthropomorphic. You can't have them look like a whole bunch of humanoids in this giant monster thing if the monster thing's supposed to be, like, a natural creature. Yeah, and, like, you know, like, you want to use things like piercers and dark mantles and yeah. things that, like, thing, you know, uh, maybe, like, different apparitions and stuff. Things that feel like they could be, like, uh, part of this thing's ecolo- you know, this ecology inside of this right. thing. And, and I, would, I would even go so far as to say, you know, whatever you're using inside, you know, reskin it. You can use the yeah, exact same exactly. stats in the monster mm-hmm. manual, but have it look like it's something. You know, yeah, this if, is... if if you're in a vein, you know, with you know blood flowing, and you want to use some kind of minute creatures like goblins or kobolds, you know, you could have it be like um, you know one-celled organisms that are you know doing stuff to you without them actually looking like kobolds. I was thinking a cloaker would make a really good white blood cell. So yeah, like you just turn, make it white with a little globular, slimy nature to it, and bam. Well, speaking it's, of it's slimy, like system. oozes, puddings, mm. slimes would all also work Absolutely. really well. Absolutely, they, they would be Two. they would be quite perfect. So again, like I like the idea, like Ted said, of you know you you have you have this encounter planned where they're all going to get eaten, mm-hmm. uh, it, which and then they, they pointed out the tricky part is making sure they all get eaten. Like this is an encounter that's probably it might even be best done like when they're camping or when they think they're safe and their guards down, when you can basically get them all at once. Yeah. Like maybe you have the monster like eat the party that's sleeping and only the people that are guards are awake mm. and and you know ho- hopefully and, and you know you know like you know which your, what your characters are generally capable of so you pick the character that is is least likely to be able to get away like you don't want to pick the wizard that has options you know or the rogue mm-hmm. you might want to go after like the you know the, the generic fighter who can basically you know he just fights things so his only option is really to run but he isn't going to be fast enough yeah, I, I I was thinking there the, the 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 characters who are likely to go into melee are the ones I would say for last. Yeah, know? that's what I mean. Okay, you, sleep, all right, you eat all the sleeping people. Okay, first that's like round one surprise. Oh, I ate everybody. Round two is the fighter going. Oh my god, it just ate everybody. I'm gonna run. Now okay. to have, but to have that internal uh, like dungeon, it's got to be larger. It's got to be larger than Sarask, pretty much. It's got to be. Well, I think the the like, car, the like you wake up because the ground's rumbling and then you notice that the mountain is actually like moving over the entirety of the sky like that kind of monstrous so i would say like you know anything that's in the gargantuan or bigger uh you know well gargantuan is technically the biggest you know size in fifth edition um but you know anything in that gargantuan size is going to be big enough to you know be able to have essentially multiple rooms or a dungeon-esque situation um, I feel like it's got to be bigger than that. Colossal. Even bigger than that. Well, well Colossal doesn't even exist. In yeah, what well, I'm saying is, it's off the charts. That's what I said, moon-sized monster. They've got damage for its bite in the book. I mean, <laughs> that was enough for me <laughs> to say it existed. <laughs> it's like 24d10 or something crazy like that. For what? A moon-sized monster bites you. They actually have that damage in the DMG. I totally missed that session. Oh, I didn't. Uh, but okay, so but you know, let's 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 
you know, remember, we're playing a fantasy game here. So, like, maybe they get shrunk when they get eaten. Maybe, you know, maybe it's an extra dimensional space inside of the creature. Yeah, there's there's definitely things. Like, I, I think the most, the, the, you know, the, one of the greatest things about being in the Dungeon Master is I don't actually have to explain it to you. <laughs> He's got a bag of devouring call on one of his teeth and everyone falls in it. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe it, maybe it is maybe it is an oversized bag of devouring. Mm. It's a castle of devouring. Yeah, I just uh yeah. I like the moon sized monster approach. Or the uh the fungal sieve. I like that fungal sieve, that the one tribality. That's a good that's a good one. I did not see that one, so Oh well I, I've linked to it before in another video, but I'll link to it again. I like that one. So I'll have to go check that out. But you know, so there's definitely a lot of things you can do, and and again, I don't really feel like I don't know, I don't know my players an explanation. Like you know, this is the adventure that that you you kind of find yourself in at this point, and like like they might just not know what happened. Like sure, if they want to try and figure it out later, they can. But you know, as a dungeon master, you don't you don't owe it to your players to explain everything that's going on in the game. Just some things your cat is beyond the scope of your character knowledge. And as the DM, I don't have to give it to you. Because as the DM, I probably haven't made it up. But, but it, like, these aren't things you need to worry about unless you really want to rack your brain on it. Right. Just play the game. Indeed. Just okay. make the monster giant. Really, really giant. Or just make there, it really, really giant. Problem solved. Yeah, you know, basically, it's you, you've apparently made your camp on top of the Sarlacc pit. Yeah. I'll... Yeah, so. And there's an adventure waiting for you. And let's face it, like, the monster <laughs> only really has to be, like, house or... Or, or castle size, to be honest with you. Right. Hmm. I mean, if those structures are big enough to have an adventure in, why isn't a monster the same size? That's a lot. That is significantly smaller than a moon, Nate. I would be really, really paranoid and claustrophobic. That would be crazy. In a house? Well, he's going to go a house mon out. A house monster. I mean, because, you know, at any time it could just, you could just fall into the stomach and not know it. <laughs> there you go. Done. Well, my point is, the size. If, if a monster is true, the size a monster of a house, the size of a house. It doesn't have to be a moon, but they do have the damage for the moon monster. Yeah. <laughs> you just want to use so, a moon monster. So you want to you want to have them thinking they're going to this castle, and now they're adventuring inside the castle golem. It could be a mimic, castle mimic. Yeah, giant castle size. Mimic. Isn't also possible. And, and you know, but my point is, just a monster. You know, the monster doesn't actually have to be. You know the size of a continent in order for you to uh, have an adventure in it. And, you know there there is there there is definitely you know the size between you know the Tarask and the moon. Uh, and the moon. Oh yeah, definitely. You know so I you know I think when you get to something that's like you know quadrupedal, a hundred feet long, it's that's long enough. It's, yeah. it's pretty big. Yeah, but I think that's still like off the chart for that's not gargantuan anymore that's that's way beyond it anything uh, anything bigger than uh huge right is that yeah. is gargantuan mm -hmm. there's just no there's just no barrier yeah they just so the moon monster's just gargantuan that's yes. it okay colossal doesn't exist anymore just I mean, i'm just clarifying what you're saying that's all yeah all right so anything above i would i would agree any i would say if it's like a long crocodilian like thing or something like that but like I don't know if a red dragon's chest cavity is big enough to have an inventor in it, you know? It's just, yeah. Probably not, unless you know maybe there's a bag of holding in there or something. The dragons, where it should happen. But you know now now I actually want to make the monster that's like the size of a dog, and, and it like has an extra dimensional space for a mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So and it's then, always hungry. Yeah, he always, always just eats because he's never going to be satisfied. It's, yeah. a, it's a scalable dog. Yeah, it's yeah, you know, it's it, it's my extra dimensional pit bull. Nice. So what do you guys what do you guys think? Uh, you know, do you like this idea? Have you used this idea? Has it worked? Has it failed? Do you like what? Dave spiting me? <laughs> so put it in the comments below. While you're at it, like, share, subscribe. You can check out some of the articles over on nerdarchy.com. You also tweeted us over on Twitter. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.